now time for the Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters out there. Welcome. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, coming to you live from the TFNN radio and television network. Oh, we love being here on the television, internet, TV, folks. It's the way to go. And uh, thank you so much for listening to us on the radio. We really appreciate that. You can always catch the archive of this show on Channel 9. Uh, you can also catch the archive of the Money Master Show that follows. That's the show that Tom and I do together. You can catch that on Channel 10. And why would you want to do that? Because, folks, I absolutely, not do I just love being here with you, but I love being able to teach you something. You know, Wednesdays are a cool day. I love the intro on Wednesday because we get to go back to Ed Young's voice, you know, about keeping your head whole, about being able to, you know, you can read the charts all you want, but you want to be able to control your emotions. And so that's what it's all about, folks. You want to talk about emotion. Well, let's see. Today is Wonderful Wednesday. And what Wonderful Wednesday has for you, if you're up in Boston or you are up in Washington, you've got Game 7. Game 7 in the first in the opening series of the uh, Stanley Cup uh, Finals. Not, the, not that this is the final series, of, but it's, you know, it's, the, it's the beginning of the Stanley Cup Finals, the, 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 the road to the Finals, and a Game 7 right out of the chute. Well, heck. Tomorrow on Thursday, you've got two Game 7s. And there's nothing like Game 7s in sports, folks. So, you know, even if you're not a hockey fan, you should become a hockey fan. But, you know, watch that. I think tonight the game uh, tip-off, of course it's not tip-off, the, the puck will be dropped right around 7.30. So tune in. You can catch that, I'm sure, on the NBC Sports uh, channel. You can catch it in high D, which is uh, high definition, which is great. I'm sure you can catch it on your Apple TV if you've got one of those. And there's plenty of folks that must have Apple TVs, Apple iPhones, Apple everything. It's all about Apple, folks. You know, you want to talk about Game 7s. Well, Apple, you can absolutely say they hit it out of the park. You know, right now, if you take a look at uh, Apple, you closed out yesterday's session here at Apple at 560.28. Last trade just fired off at 613.62. I would say that's good. That's up. Uh, we'll see how, we'll see, you know, what kind of volume is behind this move. Are we going, we're going to want to pay attention to the volume behind this move, not just right off the bat in the first five minutes. You're going to want to pay attention to how this trades today. You know, is there money coming off of the uh, table or is there money coming in behind institutions? We'll know that when we take a look at the uh, volume in Apple. But right now, you know, trading out at 613.50, it's just revving its engines. It's moving these markets higher. They had their game seven, absolutely grand slam when you take Take a look at the uh, results from Apple Computer. How is it moving the markets? Well, right now it's moving the markets worldwide, folks. It's not just moving the markets here in the United States. In fact, the IBEX over in Spain up another couple of percent. And when we take a look at our markets here, you've got the Dow futures up uh, in the 50-ish point range. Uh, you've got the ES Mini up right now, 1379.75. That's what we're looking at here on my screen. If you're following us on Tiger TV, you're going to be able to see my screens. You're going to see an ABC pattern that was out there that was created yesterday morning. We'll talk about that. Uh, we've got the uh, NASDAQ futures up fi a healthy 52 and a half points. We'll take a look at the daily chart on the NASDAQ futures and see that they is just being contained inside this uh, channel uh, that has been created. The question is going to be, is it going to break out of there? Is Apple going to have some followers? Uh, you've got the Russell futures there up right now, trading out at 805.10. That's up about 8.3 points. King dollar, King dollar only backed off so far uh, 10 ticks, just down at the 79.22 range. Gold off just a bit this morning, down $2.40. Silver up 11 cents. Light sweet crude trading out at 103.84. That's up 30 cents. Uh, you've got the, uh, go, uh, let's just quickly go around the world here. The Around the World Tour. You've got uh, the DAX right now up 93 points. I think it's pretty close to the high of their session. We'll take a look at that. 6682 is the number that's printing out right now. You've got the FTSE trading up uh, six points. That's up, uh, uh, that's trading out at 5715. The Nikkei up 93 points last night. The uh, Shanghai up 18. The Hang Seng uh, down uh, 30 points. And a slew of earnings that are out there. When I was uh, putting this into my uh, system last night, I mean, we're talking about a slew of earnings both uh, after the bell last night, before the bell, 
uh, this morning. We're certainly going to take a look at that, but we're first going to start off by going and taking a look at the ES Mini here, because that is what's really giving us the best pattern signals that are out there. Uh, and when we're taking a look at pattern signals, for me, folks, it's all about the D point, because what you're going to see inside these markets, you're going to see these markets breathe. And when they breathe, they have a uh, breath which takes you from the A to the B point. And when we take a look at a chart here, you're just looking for what I'll call the major intersection. Just picture yourself driving down a road and you're going to cross, you know, all these other streets where maybe you can enter into a side street to go into a subdivision or something. But it's really the main intersections that you come to where you're making your decisions, where there may be a stoplight, there may be a yellow light, there may be a green light. In this case here, we take a look at the uh, Dow, uh, the uh, ES Mini. This is a 30-minute chart we're looking at. We saw one of those major intersections take place at 6 a.m. on the 24th. That was yesterday. And why? Because the market moved back from there. And when it moved back, it came right down into the uh, time frame when we were coming uh, into the opening bell, moved down at 9.30 to a low of 13.61. Now, it's really important, folks. Not just really important, it is majorly important when you are taking a look at ABC patterns to understand that retracement level off of that A to B leg. Our A leg, by the way, happened when we had this hammer candle. That hammer candle was confirmed in that following trading session when you did have price move just a bit higher. Would have preferred to see it get up above the top of that hammer. It did that uh, at about uh, 12 noon, maybe 11.30, 12 noon on the uh, 23rd. For a 23rd. Nonetheless, that is our A point down there at a low of 1354.75. When you take a look at that retracement now, we're going from the low of that uh, 1030 a.m. time frame on April the 23rd all the way up to our B point. And what we'll see didn't make it all the way down to a 0.618. Looks like maybe just about a 0.50. Uh, so that tells you you're going to do a one-to-one, -one, maybe more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals C to D. You want to be paying attention to that D point. Well, of course, you're first going to start off with the C point and take a look at how price moved off of that C point. It moved off, folks, with what I'll call conviction. See, I can teach you the ABC patterns are, are relatively easy. Once you understand, you're just looking for major intersections, not minor intersections. And as long as you're always willing to go back to the chart to see if there's a new piece of information, no matter when you enter a trade, no matter when you enter an investment, what you always want to be able to do is go back to a chart, make sure that you clean it off. You take a look at it and see what kind of new information is being presented to you. That's quite frankly how it is that you approach everything in life. And so you'd want to do the exact same thing when you are trading these charts, because the more information that you get, the different decisions that you will make along the way. It's the same way in trading, it's the same way in investing. In this case here, you can see uh, in this A to B equals C to D, here's where Apple earnings came out just slightly after the close here. And you can see how coming into the one-to-one -one, A to B equals C to D, folks, which is priced at 13, uh, 1376 area, you came in with conviction. Why? What's conviction? Well, a wide-ranging bar as you're coming into the D point is telling you, it's telling me, and it should be telling you that you've got price that's going to go beyond that one-to-one -one A to B equals C to D. And you had some additional confirmation of that. Uh, just simply, we well, got two additional confirmations of it. Look at how price is moving on this C to D leg. Way more powerful than this A to B leg. And you also had less than a .618 retracement. You had all the signals out there that you would at least do one of those other 40% of the moves that are out there. You see an A to B equals C to D pattern, folks. That's going to complete 60% of the time at that one-to-one. -one. The other 40%, you're looking at a one-to-one .272, a one-to-one one .618, maybe a one-to-two. You're looking for something different, and then you're looking for candle patterns that are going to just simply light the way to understand you know, where it is that the market is going to turn, just like we did here, and not we, but just like the ES Mini did here at the bottom when it had a bullish candle show up as you were also completing an A to B equals C to D. You can see as you came into this 1.272 area at 4.30 this morning on the 30-minute chart, you were coming in with another wide-ranging bar, no bullish candle signals yet on the way down. As the market backed off, still no, did I say no bullish? No bearish signals. I don't know why I said bullish or bearish, but I'm going to make sure I tell you now. No bearish signals at all on the way back. And so right now you've got price trading out right at that 1 to 1 1.272 at that 1380 area. So where does that take you next, folks? Well, your next stop on this journey looks to be in that 1385 area. Well, what else is that 1385? Well, I'll be a son of a gun. At 1385, 
what are you going to do? You're going to start getting into the next move of a move that goes back into the 5.30 a.m. time frame from April 19th. Now, look at how as you did this 1 to 1.272, you also completed a move of a move, 100% move of a move. When you do that, folks, you're going to rest. It's like getting through that finish line. You get through that finish line, you're going to rest before you prepare for your next race. That's what the ES Mini is doing right here, right now. You can still see price, as I even pulled this back, trading along the inside edge, the inside left edge, still telling you there's some strength out there. So you had Apple hit a grand slam. You've got the markets all around the world digging that. And when we come back, you know, we'll go take a look at all of the uh, stocks that have earnings releases. We'll take a look at what's popping, such as Unisys Corp. That's up about 13.5%. UIS is their ticker symbol. They're actually up more of a percentage right now than Apple is. So they are in the lead on the way up. The lead on the way down, though, when it comes to earnings, that's Nix and NXY. They're down 26% this morning. We'll be right back, folks. X-Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex-listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold-silver producer in Argentina. X-Story is forecast to produce more than $250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has $50 million in its treasury, having spent over $60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year-end, as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You are born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. 
Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it just, it's just wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. It is Wonderful Wednesday. So let's go see what wonderful things are going on in the pre-market here. Uh, you've got uh, UIS as we were going into the uh, into the out of the first segment there. As I mentioned, they are the leader in the clubhouse. They're up as a percentage standpoint. They're up 13 and a half percent. Their last trade here. Let's see their last trade going out at 48.40. Is that possible? I, I don't think that's the last trade. Let me. Uh Let's uh, get that. There we go. Last trade, 1861. I didn't think that was right. 1861, they closed out yesterday at 1640. As I said, that's up about 14.5%. Then second in the uh, clubhouse, you got Apple. Apple up uh, right now. That last trade on Apple, let's see here. You closed out at uh, 560 yesterday. Last trade firing off at 612.20. So up 9% there. You've got uh, Timkin. Uh, TKR is the uh, ticker symbol there. Uh, their last trade far enough at 55.68. Uh, they closed out at 51.12. Uh, that's up 8%. Uh, Dana Holdings, DAN, the ticker symbol, uh, they are up 8.6%. You've got Sprint. Uh, their last trade here, uh, they're up 6.8%. Uh, uh, their last trade far enough at $2.64. They closed out at 2.47 uh, yesterday. Then you've got uh, NFX, New Field Exploration Company. Uh, they're up about 6% in the uh, pre-market. Uh, they are, let's see, last trade fired off at 35.70. They closed out at 33.71. So you're going to have a bunch of stocks that look like they are going to be gapping uh, today. Aflac, uh, you've got those guys, uh, AFL, the ticker symbol. They're up uh, healthy 6% uh, this morning, last trade firing off at 44.50. Uh, they are up, uh, they, they closed out yesterday at 42 even. RF micro devices, they're up nearly 5%. You've got uh, SIFI Technologies up about 6%. Corning, GLW, the ticker symbol, uh, they are up in the 6% uh, range. Their last trade firing off at 14.15. They closed out at 13.35. Uh, let's see here, what other big names maybe that you would be taking a look at in the up? Because there's a lot of folks that are up this morning. Edwards Life Sciences, EW. They're up about uh, 4%. Uh, they, are, they closed out at 73.33. Uh, their last trade here fired off at 76.25 a few moments ago. U.S. Airways Group, you've got the airlines up. LCC is their ticker symbol. They're up about 4%. Glass trade firing off at 9.68. Uh, they closed out at 9.31. Oh, this is perfect. Hawaiian Holdings. I don't know what they do, but I love it. And uh, you should buy their stock. No, I'm just kidding. Hawaiian Holdings, they trading up 4%. Uh, they closed out at 505, trading up five and a quarter. Penske Automotive Group, Hog, uh, they're up. Uh, Robert Half is up. Norfolk Southern is up. The Wyndham Worldwide is also up. Let's see, what else do we have here? Panera Bread, PNRA, they're up 2% this morning. Boeing, BA, uh, they're up uh, about uh, 1%. Buffalo Wild Wings, BWLD. They're up about 2%. Their last trade here, we know that that's an IBD stock. And not such a bad place to eat. Much much better than Chipotle or Chipotle or whatever it is that name is. Uh, they are up about uh, 2%. Last trade, far enough, 79.98. That was Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's go take a look at what is not doing so well in the uh, pre-market here. Uh, Percentage-wise, so uh, leading on the way down now, you've got uh, Lodge Net Interactive, L-N-E-T. They're down 21%. In the uh, pre-market, their last trade here, far enough, so that's going to certainly gap down. And it looks like that's all based on earnings. Uh, they last, uh, their last trade went out at 345, 1,500 shares, and they closed out at 438 yesterday. You've got uh, 
Entropic Communications, E-N-T-R. They're next in line. They're down 13% this morning. The last trade firing off at 410. They closed out at 475. You've got Iconics Brand Group, I-C-O-N. They're off 13% this morning. Owings Corning, that's different than uh, the other Corning. OC, they are down uh, about uh, 8%. Last trade firing off at 3175. You've got F. MC Technologies, FTI, is their ticker symbol. They're down uh, 4% in the pre-market. Baidu, Baidu off 4.5%. Uh, let's see here, what else may be on the way down? Rockwell, in from, uh, Rockwell Automation, ROK, they're down 4% this morning. They closed out at 77.40. Their last trade fired off at 74.11. Dr. Pepper and Snapple, how about that? DPS, they're off this morning. Uh, they are down. Let's see, their net income looks like their net income was down. You're not drinking enough Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper and Snapple. Try saying that three times real fast. They are down 2.7% in the uh, pre market. Let's see here. Caterpillar is off. Caterpillar down 1.6%. Uh, their last trade firing off at 106.76. They closed out at 108.40. Berkshire Brands, Berkshire Hill Brands, uh, the Southern Company, SO. They're off as well this morning. Sort of rounds off. Who is popping and who is dropping? We'll be right back. We're going to go see how these markets are going to open, folks, and whether they're going to stay up. We'll be right back. In the world of financial markets, there's a new player in town with an exciting new way to trade the markets. Nadex now offers binary options as well as bull spreads in a wide range of indices along with commodity and forex markets. With as little as $100, you can gain access to a new way to trade global financial markets while guaranteeing that your risk will always be capped. Nadex allows you to multiply your trading opportunities in ways never imagined before and access markets you want once thought were out of reach. With short-term trading opportunities available, including binary options expiring each hour the market is open, Nadex allows you to take advantage of a variety of market conditions regardless of volatility or market direction. Now is the time to take advantage of this exciting new market. Don't let this trading opportunity pass you by. Open your account today by clicking on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Nadex, a better way to trade. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations, including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insight subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? 
No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. To the races, you got the uh, Dow up 69 points. You've got the S&P up uh, 15, composite up 55, small caps up 12. So lead the charge on the way up is none other than the composite up 1.8%. Right behind it is the small caps. They are up 1.47%. You've got Microsoft up uh, about seven ticks, Intel up 26, Google up five bucks, Cisco up 14, Apple up 48 dollars and change as we uh, as we come into the open now what i do have up on my screen here folks is i have the apple one minute chart why one minute well just simply because each minute here we can get a feel for whether they're piling in or piling out so in that first minute of trading here the first minute in apple you had a uh, 1.4 million shares pop 1.4 million at around the price point of say six hundred and fifteen dollars or so uh, somebody do the math on that that's a few bucks but what you are not seeing when you take a look at the volume there you are not seeing the pile on method this is not game seven where everybody is hugging each other they're jumping on the pile the pile kept getting bigger and bigger and we are not seeing that here at least volume wise we're certainly not seeing that here price wise so you're going to want to be paying attention look on a one minute chart you're not going to trade off one minute chart but with the jubilation that you usually have with a game seven and in Apple's case, I'm calling that a game seven. When you hit that grand slam, that's in, you know, you were, you were in the extra innings. And in extra innings, you had Apple step up and hit it out of the park. And what you want to see is you want to see follow through uh, with a uh, volume. And you're going to have to be paying attention more than just this one minute chart here. But we can certainly take a look at during the first few minutes. We are not seeing the joy and jubilation. It all was in the open during that first uh, one minute. So we won't stay here on the Apple chart, but what we will do is we'll go take a look at more like the health of the markets or what's going on around the world. So let's go take a look at the uh, futures market here. We're going to take a look at the NQ specifically. Why? Because the NASDAQ has been leading us down, folks. And so the NASDAQ here, what you can see, it is inside a new down channel. This is a fairly narrow wade, uh, wade a narrow uh, band, but we also had a similar narrow band on the way up, especially as we take a look at coming off of the uh, lows back in December. In fact, if I just try to draw that in here, uh, I don't know where it went, but I'm going to just try to draw that in here relatively uh, quickly here. And we can take a look at this uh, channel. You can see that the channel looks like that. That's probably about here. That is not the, uh, if I spend a little bit more time, I would get it accurately. But uh, what you can see here is take a look at that narrow band on the way up. And what we're seeing here is a similar narrow band on the way down. And all that the NASDAQ has done here in the futures market, the NQ, was they started off uh, down at the uh, bottom of the channel. And they are now up towards that upper trend line. And so we will see if it's going to bust through here. But right now, folks, uh, you know, when we took a look at that Apple chart, what you're seeing unfold here is really the same thing. And you want to understand, you know, these channel lines. You understand all of the different aspects that we teach here at TFNN. And Wednesdays, 
Wednesdays are wonderful days to do that. Why? Because after the Money Masters show, we've got Basil Chapman. He's going to teach you the Chapman Wave. Following Basil today, we've got Larry Pesavento and a warm-up band for David White. Polar, he's going to be showing us the Power Law Vector Indicator from 3 to 4, warming up for the Tom O'Brien Show from 4 to 6. So that is on the NASDAQ futures. That's what we've got going on out there. Let's see what other daily futures charts, maybe if there's any kind of signals out here. Well, if you just take a look at the ES Mini, what you are seeing here is you're seeing the ES Mini making a .786 retracement. You're seeing that beautiful sacred geometry come into uh, play here this morning. So you've got a .786 retracement, a normal breathing pattern. You know, we'll see if this area gets busted through, if it does a full move of the move, which would take you up into that 1390 area. It would be the ES Mini, that 30-minute chart, that'll give you the biggest clue here. You know, and so it looks to me like the answer to that is yes. I expect we'll see that move of a move. You're outside now of the, uh, you're outside of the, well, you're real close to this move of a move coming back to the high at 11 a.m. on April the 20th. But it looks to me the way that this is trading that it wants to at least get up and do the 1 to 1.618. A to B equals C to D. And then we'll see if there is some, on a 30-minute chart, we'll see if there's some kind of bearish candle pattern that sets up or if it's just simply going to be a 1 to 1.618, just like the bonds were. If I, if I, uh, switch over to the bonds here real quickly. What you did see on the bonds, on the 30-year bond, you saw an A to B equals C to D. This is a chart very similar to what we were looking at on the ES Mini. Now, this is a daily chart. And so what I want to show you is these patterns, they work on a continuous basis. Just depends on what time frame it is that you're trading here. On the daily chart, you know, you're taking like this A to B. Remember I said it's so important to measure that uh, retracement of that A to B leg. If we do that here, what we're going to see is we're going to see that the retracement here came down to that beautiful point six one eight sweet six one eight. That's the suite you're going to visit if you're ever in downtown Clearwater. You're going to visit us. Come on up, shake our hands. We'd rather you just give us a hug, though. But if you want, you can shake our hands. And so we'd love to see you. Now, you do a, a point uh, six one eight. That says, hey, you're pretty likely to do maybe just a one-to-one -one move. You're one of those other 60 percenters. However, look at how you come off of that C point. You came off that C point with what? With conviction. You can look at this candle here. This candle looks just like yesterday's candle on the ES Mini after Apple hit its grand slam. You see, it really doesn't matter what the news is. All you have to do is pay attention to the chart patterns, pay attention to the candles. In fact, you're much better off doing that. Because when you do that, you don't get caught up in all of that emotion and all of the hype. You can take a look at all of the hype right here because it's telling you you are coming into a D point just like the ES Mini was with a wide ranging price bar well on the inside track of this uh, C to D leg. It said you had a lot of energy. Certainly, what does it do? It moves up that 1.272, just like we were looking at on a 30-minute chart. So I don't want, you, you know, when you take a look at these charts here, it's irrelevant what it is you're trading. It doesn't matter whether it's the futures. Get rid of that as being a reason why you wouldn't want to trade the futures. In fact, from a money management standpoint, I can tell you you're better off trading that than you are any of the doubles or triples that are out there. And then it's just really, and why? Because when you are wrong on the trade, what you like is you like to be stopped out with whatever it is that you risked. And if you're trading the uh, futures, that's what's going to happen to you. Whereas when you're trading those doubles or those triples, your stops can get jumped so often. Why? Because you're not trading round the clock. You know, you're waiting for things to just simply rev up. But I'll get off of that soapbox. But what I want to really show you is it really doesn't matter what chart we're looking at. It doesn't matter whether this is the 30-year Treasury bond or whether it's the ES Mini or whether it's the Diamonds. We'll go take a look at the Diamonds. And we'll take a look at an ABC pattern out there or any other chart that you've got because it's the normal breathing patterns that go on. In this case here, when you got up to that 1.272, you did it with a pretty decent bar here. You know, you were still well on the inside track. It was suggesting, and there was no bearish candle on a daily basis. There certainly was nothing to indicate that the move was over. And what happened here, you had the 1 to 1.618, A to B equals C to D. I don't know what the percentage time is, folks. But it is a high percentage of time that when you get up to that level that you're going to see an immediate change in trend. And that is what we have seen take place here with the 30-year Treasury. And you'd want to be able to pay attention to this chart here if you were trading the TLT or the TBT. You don't want to just make your trades off of those two charts. You want to understand what the underlying instrument. Of course, the underlying instrument here would not be the 30-year Treasury. It would be the 20-year Treasury that you would be taking a look at. If we take a spin around the world here... 
Uh, why would we want to do that? Well, we'd want to take a look at the DAX. We'd want to take a look at the DAX because take a look at the uh, channel that the DAX has been trading in. What you are seeing now, the DAX is, uh, let's see here, it's trading out at uh, 6694 it's up 104 points it is up near its session highs the actual session high so far is 6702 again you are at 6694 it looks to me like the dax wants to go up here and test the bottom of this trend line oh it's going to be important to come back to your charts at 11:30 maybe during Basil's uh, show and take a look and see where the uh, dax has uh, closed out if it closes out near the top of its session Pretty good chances are that the U.S. markets will do the same. Uh, and if the U.S. markets don't do the same, hmm, something to think about. Now, if you take a look at the FTSE, the FTSE is not behaving the same way. You can see the FTSE not trading anywhere near the top of its range. The top of its range today, the high being at the 57.45. You're trading out at 57.24. So that is, uh, what, uh, 57.45. So it's 25 points uh, below that. So they're not having the same party over in the UK. I wonder if that is currency related. Let's go take a look and see how the pound is doing. We can take a look at the at the euro as long as we're out here on this uh, this uh, tab here. So the euro above its swing point at March the 15th. Important to understand that. Hey, you know, it's just simply still moving sideways but gradually uh, making its way higher. Uh, important to understand as we go take a look at the when we go take a look at the king dollar chart and see what's going on out there. But first it was the pound. I want to see what is going on with the pound. The pound after making its 100% move a move, it did that yesterday. So it does that yesterday. And let's see, is this possibly going to put in a bearish engulfing candle? So yesterday, the uh, Great British Pound U.S. dollar currency pair closes out at 1.614. Let's see, where does it open? 1.614. Uh-oh. So it is saying, that's interesting, you're going to want to pay attention to currencies for sure, because after it makes a move of a move, if you get the Great British Pound to close below its open from yesterday's session, the open was 1.613. You're trading right now at 1.612. Uh, still a lot of time in the day. If you do get a close below that, after making a 100% move will move what you should see. Now, you'll want to see follow through tomorrow. That means tomorrow you would want to see a lower close and wherever it closes today. You get that combination. That tells you that it's likely going to come back uh, and do a retracement. What kind of retracement? Well, on the uh, pound, I would say the minimum retracement would at least be that dead cat bounce. That would take you down to one60 Three, it looks like, but more likely the 0.618 area, 1.59, and a little bit of change. Uh, let's go take a look at King Dollar, since I mentioned it. And King Dollar now trading well inside, more, looks like at least halfway inside the bullish engulfing candle from April the 3rd. You know, and it was pounded and pounded and pounded away trying to get back inside there. You finally got a close in there. On the 20th, that was last Friday. Uh, on Monday, it looked like it was trying to push its way the heck out of there. But uh, late in the trading session, the uh, king dollar was pushed down. You closed inside there. Uh, yesterday, you closed a little bit lower. Today, you're trading out at 79.18. Looks to me like what is going to happen here is the bottom of this bullish engulfing is going to get tested. That would take price down to 78.79. You're at 79.18 right now. Not a, a long way to go, and that can certainly happen in the uh, in the uh, aftermarket, the after hours. So it can happen uh, at any time. Now, if you get a close below 78.79, what that's actually setting up is probably a larger A to B equals C D down. So let's take a look at what that could possibly be. The A point that we would start with is the March 15th high. That March 15th high, 81.16. Your B point would be the bottom of that uh, bullish engulfing candle. Your C point would be the high that was put in on April the 5th. A one-to-one, -one, A to B equals C to D. Let's go ahead and shorten this up here for our home viewers. That would take into 77.96. Folks, at 77.96, Oh, I'm sorry. Let me let me clear this off here. Let me get you the right one. Even I couldn't read it. Yeah, so 7796 would be the one to one. 7796, that makes a lot of sense. Why? Because it takes you down into the low candle of February the 29th. 
which was David White's birthday, a leap year guy, and it'd take you right down into that area. That would be making a 100% move or move, and that would make all the sense in the world. You do that, and what you should see is you should start seeing some volume come into Apple. Why? Because it's not just all about Apple, but you should see the pile-on method of Game 7 start to appear. We haven't seen that yet. Uh, not that volume is. Let's go ahead and put this on a five-minute chart here. So let's start measuring the five-minute charts versus the one-minute charts here on Apple. Again, you can see it popped out of the gate. Uh, volume here right now, even as it's moving higher, you're looking at volume really uh, not doing a whole lot here in Apple. Of course, that was a lot of money spent right there at the open uh, in the first five minutes, 3.2 million shares times an average price of around 600 and change. That is some uh, good bread being put on the uh, table. Let's go take a look at the ETF indices. Let's go take a look at, again, the shorter term time frames. That means I'm going to pull up the five minute charts as soon as my eyes can eye them. Here we go. So here we've got the five minute charts. Make sure they're all five. We do have five minute charts. So let's go take a look at the uh, spies first. We're going to take a look at the uh, spies. And in the uh, spies, let's go see what you're doing. The spies are coming up against uh, the uh, swing point areas back at uh, 1040 uh, in the um, uh, morning on April the 20th. Looks to me like you've got the uh, volume as you're getting over that area. Let's pull this back a little bit further. Let's actually, let's see here. So the spies, what the spies are doing, I want to go ahead and put this on a 30-minute chart. It's going to be a little bit less noisy. And so let's see what we're doing on a 30-minute chart here. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of some of the stuff out there. Okay. So what the spies are really trying to do, the spies right now are trying to come into the uh, swing point that was established really out here at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You got to a high of 139.35. Uh, you can take a look at where you had some uh, volume. The last volume was going into the close, which had 19 million shares on the 30-minute chart. We are only about, uh, let's see here, 20 minutes into the trading session, and we have done 12 million shares. So 12 million going into 19 million. It's going to be a close call. Uh, you have not gotten up there. 877-927-6648. Dow is up 85. S&Ps are up 16. Composite up 64. NDX up 67 points right now. We'll be right back, folks. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. 
I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, My jeweler offered me uh, about $650. But you get a check in the mail tomorrow for about $1,200. At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off us? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we waited at was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. Catch Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. The Money Masters, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Got the Dow up 99 points right now. S&P is up 17, and let's take a look at what is moving and what is grooving. We'll move into the upside. Apple in the charge, uh, in the lead. Dollar-wise, up 56 bucks right now, trading out in the 616 range. Priceline uh, behind that, uh, up 24 bucks. So that's a healthy move. That's three and a half percent to the upside there. Uh, that is trading out at the 70874. Mark 709 has just hit MasterCard right behind that. That's up uh, 10 bucks. Uh, that is up uh, 2 and 3, uh, 2.39%. Panera Bread having a, a good showing out there, PNRA. They're up 9 bucks and change. That's up a little over 6%. CF Holdings behind that. Uh, not my f- favorite Mexican uh, grill, uh, CMG, Chipotle. Uh, they are up about uh, 7 bucks right now. Uh, Google also up. Edward Life Sciences up. You've got... Uh, Let's see here, Equinix, E-Q-I-X, they also are up. And if we take a look at, that's what's moving to the upside. Let's take a look at what is uh, grooving to the uh, downside. You've got uh, Laura Allard, Inc., L-O, is the uh, ticker symbol. They're off 6% right there. Uh, Their earnings... uh, Probably uh, they missed their earnings or their guidance here. Their earnings per share buck seventy four versus a buck seventy one last year. Revenues were down. Oh, net income was down two twenty three versus two forty eight, and uh, revenues were also off. Uh, so they are not growing at Lorillard Inc. Uh, Lorillard Inc. L O. Let's just see what uh, do they actually do. L O is the uh, ticker symbol, and uh, Lorillard is manufactures sell cigarettes in the United States. Okay, well. How about that? People are smoking a little bit less, or they're not buying Newport, Kent, True, Maverick, or Old Gold. Uh, and uh, so that is with Lorillard. If we take a look at what else is uh, dropping, what's grooving to the downside, you've got Baidu. Uh, they are down 5 bucks in change, down about uh, 3.8%. C.H. Robinson Worldwide, C.H.R.W., uh, they're off about 6% this morning, down 4 bucks in change. Infi, Infi, I-P-H-I. Uh, not really sure. Uh, they are off, let's see here, because of, uh, let's see, they had a Q1 loss per share of $0.05 cents versus a profit last year. Uh, that's a reason to be down. Their net income, uh million versus 2.8 last year. Earnings per share off. Let's see, where's their revenue uh, number here? Where's the revenue number? Not uh, not popping off, but my guess is their revenue number was also uh, down. Uh, if we take a look, Caterpillar trading off uh, just a bit, nothing uh, trading down about 2.5%. Down two dollars and seventy-four cents. Netflix off uh, a couple of bucks. Uh, Owings Corning 
uh, OC again they're off a couple of bucks so I'm going to take a look at uh, LO that's that uh, Laura Lar Y Laura Lard uh, the reason is is because you know we talk so often about when you are inside a trade the importance is to be able to be taking a look at where the volume is at because when you release earnings. So, you know, people have said, do I pay attention to earnings, you know, if I'm inside a trade? And, and here's what, uh, you know, I want to, what I do, folks, is I take a look at the existing pattern that we're in. But what you should always be aware of when you are in a trade, especially as you are coming into earnings, you want to be aware of where is that next area of support. So if for some reason the market, doesn't matter what the news is, doesn't matter what is released, the question is what's going to be the behavior of the buyers and sellers out there. And you want to understand where you're going to have some support, where you're going to have some institutional support, not your friends and family that maybe you got into that trade. And in this case here, we take a look at Lorillard, LO again being the ticker symbol, you're going to see that that first area of support was a low of 126 up to a high of 129 when it did 5 million shares. Where is it trading right now? 126.29. And so the volume is actually not too shabby. Only 395,000 shares in the first half hour. That was going into that session that had 4.9 million shares. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Tom and I will be up next. Then Basil, Larry, David White. Have a great, wonderful Wednesday, folks.